talking to Alban Lauka today, who uh, contributed an article on secession national unification and the interrelationship with membership and voting patterns in international organizations. Uh, but maybe you can tell us briefly what is the main uh, argument of your of your paper? Yes, uh, sure. Um, so I thought about this idea a couple of years back. Um, there was actually three three years back. There was a debate going on in my home country about uh, the possibility of uh, unifying with Kosovo. I'm from Albania and. Uh, being that uh, both countries have above 90% Albanian population, some people are in favor of unification, some people are against it. And I was a little surprised that uh, one of the arguments against uh, unification w had to do with uh, the international influence that both countries have um, as uh, independent states or as a potential unified state. And the argument was actually pretty simple. Um, basically stated that um, as two states, you have more votes in international organizations and uh, more representatives. And as such, the one uh, ethnicity, which is Albanian, will have uh, uh, more influence abroad than if it uh, was to become one state. And to me, this was a little um, counterintuitive because uh, maybe, yes, maybe you have more international influence, strictly speaking, through representatives and votes, but there's additional um, gains even in the international arena. So I wanted to measure that mm -hmm. and make sure um, if, if there is a difference, what the difference is and how it might affect uh, efforts to um, unify or to succeed and desires mm -hmm. and incentives to do so. So th this is the, the problem that the paper deals with. Basically, uh, what is the difference in votes um, in cases when, so in every case that two states uh, might unify or one state might have a succession um, what is the gain or the loss so the cost mm -hmm. in votes in international organizations and based on the difference between the potential unified state and the two existing ones um, you can have an idea of how that could uh, incentivize or uh, on the other, on the other uh, hand, um, maybe de-incentivize unifications or successions. Mm -hmm. and, and you're looking at several cases, right? You're looking at uh, Romania yes. and Moldova, Greece and uh, yes. Cyprus. I picked, yeah. I picked uh, except for Albania and Kosovo, I picked mm -hmm. cases that uh, theoretically, uh, like potentially, could offer. Uh, other cases of uh, discussions on unifications or that have had such cases in the past. Uh, so I picked three cases that are separate states and maybe could unify based on the fact that they have um, majorities of the same ethnicity. Mm -hmm. uh, ethnicity as in same language speaking ethnic group. Um, and one case which was uh, Germany which has already unified in that case, I calculated uh, the cost of unification uh, to see how much they lost, mm. how, how many votes they lost in each international organization, and where would they be now if they had not unified um, in the night in the early nineties. So, your conclusion is is, is rather uh, ambivalent, right? Uh, or how would you how would you how would you say uh, is that argument plausible that uh, Kind of uh, staying two countries for strategic reasons is uh, is a is a persuasive argument, or what is your? How do you well, assess it? There are a couple of conditions that you have uh, to to consider. For example, the two countries have to be in good terms, and there has to be cultural uh, homogeneity in the ethnic group, 
uh, even across the border. For example, um, Austria and Germany um, can can uh, vote mainly uh, like simil similarly in the EU, but there's no guarantee. So, but uh, even if this condition is fulfilled, I think today the the results show that. Uh, the countries where the effect might be greater are the countries of the European Union, mm -hmm. where um, single um, single vote uh, one one country per, per uh, sorry one vote per country is the uh, mode of uh, voting in the uh, council, um, and it's one of the two main uh, uh, mechanisms right now, but. In 2017, it will gain even more relevance, um, and uh, and the other in the European Parliament again, population is uh, important, but also statehood adds some value to it. And you can mm -hmm. see the Romania Moldova case. They if they unify, uh, they would have I think eight uh, members of parliament less mm -hmm. than if they both were members of the European Parliament. So the highest influence of, of the, on the international votes is in the EU. But still, I think today um, the impact is not uh, big enough to, to prevent ethnicities from, uh, from uh, seeking unification or succession, mm -hmm. uh, mainly based on uh, the fact that sovereign states are, are still quite uh, powerful in uh, um, implementing their decisions in uh, public policy in general. Uh, however, if you compare this to, let's say, just 50 years ago, uh, the influence is clearly on the rise. So, so there is a potential uh, strengthening of the argument as international organizations become more powerful. Mm -hmm. But of course, that argument rests on the assumption that countries are full actors in international institutions. I mean, if you look at the case which motivated your research, Kosovo and Albania, of course, there we have the difficulty that one of the two is not a full member of international organizations. And as a result, that dynamic, um, the kind of double power of, a, of, of two states doesn't quite work, right? Yes, yes, uh, but to just just for the sake of the argument, I calculated the votes mm. that Kosovo would have if they achieve membership in uh, all the organizations mm -hmm. that I considered. Mm. So, in this case, because the way that the, the way that uh, politicians see this problem, um, they are taking into consideration the votes, of course, that Kosovo would have if they mm. actually become members of the EU and other uh, international organizations. Uh, obviously, right now, there is no difference. Mm -hmm. um, but right. this is a potential... Right, it's uh, hypothetical. Potential. I mean, so in that sense, in a certain way, the conclusion would be uh, that uh, if Albania and Kosovo are joining the European Union, there's an interest to remain as two states. Uh, if not, it doesn't matter so much. Um, my, well, my, my conclusion... So, my finding is that... Um, if they both join the EU, um, the interest uh, to remain two states uh, is a little bit strengthened, mm -hmm. but I think it's still not enough for uh, consideration when talking about unification or succession. And I, mm -hmm. I don't want to argue for any of those, mm -hmm. um, but I think in this specific case, the uh, votes gained mm -hmm. are uh, almost uninfluential. So mm -hmm. in the EU, in the EU uh, Council, uh, they gain, uh, if I remember correctly, about three percent of the total vote, which is um, very rarely um, the decisive margin in uh, in the Council. Mm -hmm. um, however, it was a little bit more for Romania, and Moldova, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so depending on the country size, um, the, the difference can can be uh, greater or smaller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, I think one of the key points which you mentioned earlier is that um, 
even countries which have the same dominant nation um, might find themselves in favor of different arguments uh, in a de policy decision, right? So there's uh, the assumption that they always have the same view is probably not correct, considering that probably Cyprus and Greece might have different views. I mean, they might share views on, I don't know, maybe even Turkey, um, but they will have very different views on other issues. For example, what you know, what makes a successful economy? So um, Cyprus might protect offshore banking. Greece might not be having the same interest, and the same would apply for other cases as well. So uh, presumably not all policy is driven by national, in terms of ethno-national interest, but by other issues as well. Yes, yes, definitely. And this is one of the, of the um, points that I bring to show that um, separate statehood is not as influential as um, it seems at first sight mm -hmm. um, in, in, in terms of uh, international influence. Mm -hmm. uh, because, of course, uh, if influence is uh, divided in two, then you can also expect two different uh, agendas. Mm -hmm. So um, there is actually some ev evidence uh, for culturally um, culturally um, close uh, ethnicities, uh, ethnic kin nations um, having similar voting patterns, mm -hmm. but there is absolutely no guarantee that uh, they will always support each mm -hmm. other. And you have some sort of, to, to a certain extent, some voting blocs mm -hmm. in the EU, the Benelux countries and the Scandinavian mm -hmm. countries, for example, but uh, still there are differences, especially when it's about interest rather than identity. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, uh, thank you very much, Alban. Maybe uh, further research could look at Eurovision Song Contest and that impact has on having two countries or uh, Olympic Games or so on. But, uh, of course, uh, that's another topic. So thank you very much for talking to us. And thank you also for the article, which, of course, offers a lot more detail on the questions we've discussed here. Thank you for the interview and uh, for the questions. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.